Geleceğe doğru doğru adım. İstanbul Medipol Üniversitesi. Hello dear international students and thank you so much for tuning in again. Today we are back with another great guest and I would like to introduce you to Assistant Professor Dr. Bengi Atun from School of Fine Arts and Architecture. Hello, nice to meet you. How are you? I'm fine, Dilara. How are you? Good I'm to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, let's move on to the first question. To begin with, what could you say about architecture, design and art education in our country? Okay, so to begin with, um, Turkey is, has a, is a country with a very rich history. Mm. Um, and uh, for that reason alone, it's great to study in this country. Um, because students are exposed to the culture, the historical buildings, and also um, Turkey is a country with a very young population and very dynamic in that sense. And Istanbul is where all this dynamism, you know, yeah. is taken to an extreme, so to speak. So um, it's uh, for those reasons alone, um, studying architecture here is very multifaceted. Um, because of the country um, and students are able to combine these um, different aspects of design into their um, uh, studies and practice. Yes, that's true. Okay, now the second question. Could you tell us about the School of Fine Arts, Design and Architecture at Medipol University and especially your department, the Department of Architecture? What departments do you teach in and where does the education continue? So our um, faculty of fine arts, design and architecture has seven programs under it. We have an architecture department, an interior architecture department, a um, urban design and landscape architecture department, a industrial design department. Um, we have gastronomy and culinary arts department. Um, I'm not missing anything. We have visual communication design department and we also have a Turkish music department. So we have seven departments. I'm part of the Department of Architecture, so I uh, teach under that department. Although, because of the interdisciplinary nature of our program, I also teach interior architecture students and even sometimes industrial design students. Um, and that's actually one of the distinguishing aspects of our um, program in general, of our faculty in general. Um, perhaps I can talk a little bit about some of the mandatory courses I teach because I think it will give students a, like a feeling and a flair for what is going to expect them should they come here, um, yes. especially in their first year. Definitely, I think they would love to hear it. Okay, so I teach um, Introduction to Design 1 and 2. Um, mm -hmm. They will take Introduction to Design 1 in the fall and they will take Introduction to Design 2 uh, in the spring. Um, those courses are the first time they're exposed to design. So we um, try to teach them what design is, you know, what is design. And while we do that, we um, um, we base it a little bit on the design thinking methodology because that is really where um, that methodology came from. It came from design. So um, we teach them how to question what they're doing, why they're doing it. Um, we um, teach them about the basic elements of design like the human body, the human movement. Mm. So scale is something they uh, become very familiar with. Um, and we have some really interesting um, conceptual projects that they do in the first semester. So they're given elements like sticks or modular elements. Um, these could be like waste material um, that they then need to put together mm -hmm. um, to create a design. So they need to formulate their concept, um, explain it, articulate it, rationalize it. So. Um, all of these things are things that they learn in their introduction to design studios. And then by the end of the year, that first year, mm -hmm. um, they're able to design like a medium-sized house. So that's great. Um, yes. And also I should mention um, another uh, mandatory course that mm -hmm. I teach, um, which, is, which sort of um, summarizes in a good way what the program is. It's called Interdisciplinary Design Studio Class. 
Um, and that's a class where not only different disciplines work together to produce a design, um, they also collaborate. So they learn how to work in a group um, and they learn how to work with different disciplines. Um, and they, in, that, in that class they address world problems. They find a world problem that is of significance and then they try to find a solution to it as a team, you know, just using this design thinking methodology. So um, I hope that kind of helps the students get a, a, an idea about what it might be like in their first year. Of course, there are many other classes. These are only the ones I, I teach. Mm. They already sound so great. I'm sure they will definitely love it. And um, of course, now that you've mentioned it, Why exactly should a student uh, who wants to study architecture and design choose Medipol University? Okay, I mean, um, we're in the city of Istanbul in Turkey, which is a great city. Um, yeah. And um, architectural education is not only education taken in class mm -hmm. um, through design uh, studio projects or others. A good architectural education should really involve exposure, experiencing places, significant places, significant buildings, mm. um, interesting streets, you know, landscapes. All of these are part of an uh, uh, architectural education. And they have the opportunity to do this in Istanbul. Um, so that's one big reason. Uh, another one that is more specific to Medipol is we, we do have a very comprehensive program. So, mm -hmm. you know, in your regular architectural program, you would always have your design studio classes, right? Those are the must-givens of any architectural program. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, at Medipol, we have um, a lot of hands-on practice-based classes, mm -hmm. beginning from their first year. So... For example, in their first year, they have a class where they learn the bidding process, right? You know, you bid for a project, you um, tell which price you can do it for, mm -hmm. you determine how much material is going to be used for that project, you draft a contract. Um, so all of those things they're exposed to from their first year onwards. Um, And um, related with that, uh, we also have a lot of internship opportunities as well as classes that are practice-based. So, you know, this could be a restoration project um, and they travel uh, uh, within Turkey and as well as overseas to co kind of carry out these projects. Um, so um, that's another reason. We have great faculty. <laughs> Um, I don't say that because I'm here. I, I really do believe that we have very good faculty um, mm. that have decades of um, experience in very prestigious universities in Turkey. Mm. Um, our dean, as well as um, department head, um, have uh, decades of experience at one of the most prestigious universities in Turkey, and they came from there to found the architecture and the you know fine arts and um, uh, school at Medipol. Um, so these are the ones that come to my mind, but there are many. And sustainability is a topic that we mm. emphasize a lot. Uh, and we study that topic through its various branches. Mm. Um, so all of these are you know, really good reasons they should choose the university. Yes, that's true. The reasons are very excellent. And now let's move a little bit more into detail. Could you maybe give us some information about your design build workshops and other work-related professional practices? Um, we have, like I said, it's a program that emphasizes hands-on practice-related projects. Mm. So I can mention some hands-on projects that the students have done uh, within Turkey. Um, mm -hmm. They've done, for example, in Iznik, um, Uh, in Erzincan and in Dacha, they have gone and there have been some collaboration with local municipalities mm -hmm. where they either um, looked at historical buildings um, and determined how they were to be uh, restored mm. uh, or were involved in other kinds of survey projects and planning projects um, in collaboration with local authorities. Um, there have also been projects that uh, students have gone overseas to carry out. Mm 
Mm -hmm. um, there have been a number of projects in North Cyprus which um, they carried out, mm -hmm. including a very interesting one where they actually built uh, a bus stop out of Adobe um, for a municipality, the mun oh. mun munici municipality of Vukonok and yeah. North Cyprus. So, I, you know, really interesting projects. Um, and they've also gone overseas to look at cities. Mm -hmm. um, Another project that comes to mind um, mm. is an internship project that is being done right now as we speak. Yes. Um, in fact, tomorrow I will have a critique of the students' work for that. Mm. So what they're doing is they're using um, pre-made containers mm -hmm. to um, design a studio in the South Campus here where we are, where all the classes are held actually. Yes. So, uh, they're going to um, design a studio environment because of the pandemic, you know, we need mm -hmm. more space and um, uh, they're actually, that's their internship projects using pre-made um, and they're collaborating with this firm who produces these containers. So mm -hmm. this is a good example of um, industry uh, academician relationship mm -hmm. and the involvement of industry in the program. Um, I should also mention that um, we have around uh, 40 full-time faculty in mm -hmm. the department, but we also have over 100 part-time faculty who are coming from the field of practice and the industry. Yeah. And they're very well-known and accomplished people within their specific mm -hmm. fields. So that naturally uh, puts us in touch with industry and um, significant um, practices outside the academia. So that is also a very um, important strength of the, of the department I didn't mention, which is important to know for the students. Yes, definitely. And since you mentioned collaborations, um, what would you say? Are there any specific awards that came to your mind? which the department may be uh, won? Um, I mean, we have many academicians who have won awards um, uh, in our industrial design department. Uh, Oya Akman is very well known for her awards um, that comes to mind. Um, in our department of architecture, um, Hassan Shener is on the very prestigious Ahan Awards jury member. He's one of the jury members. Um, and many others, and in fact, actually, our students also in these classes that I mentioned, the mm. Interdisciplinary Design Studio One class, which I teach, but there's another class that is Interdisciplinary Design Studio Two. Uh, the students produce uh, a lot of projects uh, for which they actually get patents. We have a patenting office, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, some of them go on to get um, awards. So we do have uh, a large number of. Um, uh, yeah. award-winning um, academicians as well as students <laughs> so uh, maybe one of those listening could be one of those students who receives an award and to anyone who's still not convinced to study architecture mm. what kind of advice would you say to those students okay I mean architecture is a difficult um, subject to study mm -hmm. um, it's very multifaceted mm. so um, you know, if a student is interested, I think they need to look at this as a kind of lifelong learning experience, right? It's not, yeah. it's not something where you learn a few technical things and then you're done and done for life, so to speak. Mm. I mean, we can say the same for many other fields, but I think architecture especially, because it's so enmeshed with technology, art, culture, history, and... Mm. Our perceptions of those, um, as well as how they develop in terms of technology, um, changes constantly and we need to, um, so they need to be prepared for that. It's, this is kind of a beginning and yes. um, it's a lifelong learning. It mm. requires a lot of hours of work. They will have sleepless nights, so they should really enjoy what they're doing. They should enjoy the idea of making things, mm. um, thinking about things, um, coming up with solutions to problems, because es essentially that's what architecture is. Yeah. You have a lot of different requirements um, mm. 
that sometimes conflict each other, right? If you do that, you can't do another one. So you yes. have all these complex requirements that um, you have to weigh and balance and come up with a synthesis that works, right? It's, it's good, it's practical, yes. and it makes people happy and makes them feel good, but that's, that's a synthesis process, and it has to do with understanding all those variables and coming up with a... Um, with a effective, efficient uh, solution to them. So mm. if they like this kind of not so linear thinking <laughs> um, and, and they like the hard work and the idea of making things, um, mm -hmm. then I think, you know, they're on the right track. Yes, thank you so much for this honest and great advice. And also thank you so much for taking your time and sharing your knowledge with us. And also, thank you to our students who tuned in again. I hope you had such a great time as I did. And see you again tomorrow for the last time to our live event. Thank you.